So we'll say that that is the in-between and that is our animation. Great. Now I'm going to go in there and make some changes just so that we're so that this is more of a an accurate um, representation of what animation is like. So first of all, let's just make that head slightly bigger. But also, this is the breakdown position. So this is the one where loads of stuff is going to happen. And I'm just going to come in here and make that slightly bigger. And I'm just going to brush whoa, on the wrong tool. I'm just going to brush the face to show that there's a little bit of drag happening as he moves forward. A little bit of drag on there. Wouldn't necessarily be that much drag, but let's just do it. And I'll also follow through with the ears, just dragging them back like that as he goes through the scene. So yeah, that looks fine. I think I'll just do a little bit of that with the nose too, just let the nose drag a bit as a drawing. And I think I'll make him blink. So I'll take this one here and I will um, delete it and draw a new line. So again, we're getting into dangerous territory here. So I've just deleted that and back into draw mode. I'm going to draw his eye as a closed line instead. There we are. Right. So his eye closes and then we get to there. So as you can imagine, when that happens, we're going to have a big interpolation issue again. So let's just take a look at that and see what happened. First of all, what number should the eye be? Seven. What number is the eye? Ten. The mouth is now seven. So I'll start my process by taking this back to seven. There we go. And we'll do an interpolation just to see how badly damaged that is. It's not. It seems quite happy. So that one worked out well. Let's just take that for what it is. Right, okay. I also don't think his arm should be going up that quickly. I think um, his arm should delay and come in afterwards. Uh, so I'm going to reinterpolate this arm and again cause potentially cause another issue like I did with the ear. So I'm going to start by deleting the arm and I'm going to go into multi frame, select the two frames that I'm in betweening. I'm going to come over to this one first, select that arm and over to this one second and select that arm. So now it knows which ones it's doing. Connected only. And wonderful. So I'm just going to say that his arm... I'm actually not... I don't have any use here for the interpolation tool. I don't think that's going to work out. So I'm just going to select this arm instead and paste it again like that. I'm going to turn off this and multi-frame and I'm just going to look instead at putting his arm somewhere like that so that I can work this out and I think I'll just say that his arm simply juts forward like that maybe put it there instead yeah there we go so we'll just do that instead and we'll make it so that the arm does the bend at the end so I pasted it here as well by mistake so let's have a look at that yeah another happy landing Right, so his shoulder moves up quite dramatically there, which I do need to consider. So I'm going to just m move that forward a bit instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his shoulder does move up a lot there. Let's just say it'll go to there. I think I'll hang this back. So let's put the cursor there and just drag that back a bit like that. Now, where's that elbow? That elbow is right there. So again, I just want that swing to happen, that swinging motion. So I think I'll just put it there. Yeah, great. Okay, we'll just say that that's, that's a good enough position. Now, let's get this one in. So I'm just going to put an arbitrary in-between frame here for this one. I'm just literally going to do them all. I'm going to move them all in that direction by so much like that. There we go. Now from there to there. There might be a bit more of a creative... I think I'm just going to slow it in like this. There might be a bit more of a creative breakdown that we can put there. But, you know, maybe his eye starts to shut there instead. I'm not too sure. Now for this one. Again, I'm going to treat that arm separately. And I'll have to treat the eye separately as well. 
but for now let's just do them all so that the stroke order isn't messed up too much so we'll just say that we'll slow in around there okay excellent now let's deal with the individual bits so I don't think that's so bad. I'm going to actually use the sculpt tool to just sculpt that into a slightly better shape, but otherwise, I don't think that's so bad. Let's turn that up a little bit so it's a little bit harsher. Let's drag his paw behind a bit, just to suggest that there's some uh, weight to his paw and that he does have a wrist, even though he tends to be a bit of a, a dumpy looking character, does Pooh Bear. So just take that to there. And yeah, that's fine. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, great. We'll have to slow that in a bit more, but it's fine for now. Now, when it comes to this eye, I'm going to interpolate that again by itself. So over here at the moment, we've got that going on. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to select this eye, and I'm going to shift select that eye and then I'm going to do only selected and get Blender to give me a rough interpolation so it's giving me a terrible interpolation I just don't don't think there's anything I can do with that really but then what would Pooh's eye even look like when it's gradually opening it's actually quite a hard one to answer so I think I'll I'll get the position of it right instead so I'm going to backtrack and uh, return the eye that I had there we go and instead of doing a fresh interpolation I'm going to use the sculpt tool and I'll turn this off just so I can see it a bit better and I'll just use the sculpt tool to to slowly push that eye shut again like that just so it has that impression that it opened and perhaps another in between will uh, go a long way for that I also get the impression that the eye may have been better staying closed until that last frame instead so I may I may go in there and just add more slow out so that we have that opportunity. The body is almost fine. So I'm just going to take those I'm going to take this one here and just shunt it along two frames like that and basically put another in between in there. Let me turn the selection back on so I can see. So go to edit mode. I like to use interpolation in edit mode. I'm not I'm not so sure why, but I do. Right, and we'll we'll just say that we'll go to 75%. Just to add that slow in in there. That looks quite nice. You can see the way, again, there's, there's some morphing going on with the hand. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll mess with the arm first. I'll just uh, grab this arm and delete it. We'll come over to this frame, select this arm, come over to that frame select that arm so those two are selected we'll use only selected and we'll just put this in by itself now I think what I'll do for this one is go all the way to its finishing pose which is approximately there and I'll just nudge it back slightly with the sculpt tool I'll try and suggest that the whole forearm moved a little bit at the end of there. There we go. So you've got some pop going on, so that does need to be slowed out a little bit more. And I think I'll say the body is done now, but I'll nudge this arm one extra one along. Um, but I don't want to take the whole frame this time because it will take everything. Instead, I'm going to press I and I'm going to duplicate the active frame like that. And I'm going to come over here and put an in-between between that and that. So I'm going to go to edit mode, select this hand, delete it. Only selected is turned on. We'll take that one and we'll take that one. They were already selected from earlier. And we'll just put that bit of interpolation in. And then we'll say we'll go for a roundabout there. And we'll try to use the onion skin as best you can to sort of spot where things are. But yeah, 
that hand looks great. And his blink is okay to be honest, there's not really a lot more you can do to that. Interpolation tool is doing what it does well, which is slowly interpolating. I think the only thing I would have changed with this eye is it's opening so soon. Like I would have actually liked it if it had arrived, if his head had arrived and then his eye opened afterwards. Right, the last thing I'd point out is that his arm at the back is kind of just flying in out of nowhere. So what I would normally do is say, well that needs to be that needs to be given that same equal treatment as the other one. And it'll present its own problems because it's in a different place. It's not uh, it's not going to be ordered the same way as the last one. So I'll turn multi-frame off and just have a look at this arm. So it starts there and it goes there. So with this one here, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to go here, select it, go there, select it, come in the middle, and only selected is ticked. So now we'll do that. Now immediately we are officially on the wrong layer, as you can see. So I think what I'll do is I'll put that arm roughly there. I'll just use the sculpt tool to pull it in slightly like that, because what I was after was something like that. Now I could just leave it in this weird deformed mess, but remember that you're going to be using the interpolation tool to create more frames afterwards. So if you make a mess here, it's going to show afterwards. But the big thing is, this is in the wrong order again. It's come to the front, which is what happened with the ear earlier that caused all the chaos. So it's currently number 10, and it's supposed to be number 0. So hopefully that will be quite straightforward. Let's grab this and zap it all the way down to zero like that. From there to there. And we'll see if Blender is quite happy to now use that one to give us this next frame. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to press Alt A to get rid of everything. And we'll delete this one because it's the one that we don't want. And I'm now going to go here, grab this one there, grab that one, and in the middle, interpolate. And yeah, it's all quite happy doing what it's doing. Would it have done the whole thing? Possibly not. We'll have to give that a little test in a minute and see. I'll just say that I'll put that about there and in sculpt mode. Let's pull this in. I think I'll um, make the drop off weaker and pull that down. What I would say is this all demonstrates that interpolation goes wrong when you're using it to interpolate everything based on the stroke order. It can be perfectly effective if you're telling it where frame A is, where frame B is, and you're doing the only selected route. It tends to behave a lot better. Let's just send this to the back like that. What stroke number is that? Zero. What stroke number was it here? Zero. Right. So yeah, we've got a better arm there now. I would just want that one to smooth in a lot better. But I think I'll adjust that using the sculpt brush rather than messing around with anything else. So I'll just say that I'll uh, nudge the elbow in a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Great. Let's do that test and just see how badly it, it would have messed up. So if I just pretend that I'm going to do a full interpolation without anything selected between these two. Okay, so it was fine. It would have been okay because all of the stroke order wasn't that badly messed up like it was earlier. Right. Well, I think that concludes the tutorial. We've got Winnie the Pooh having a look down at the ground. We've used the interpolation tool. We've had a good look at the stroke order, which is integral to the interpolation tool working well. And We've got a nice bit of animation here, 19 frames of animation, well 18 because we started on frame 1. Yeah, I hope that was useful.